Hello everyone, Alana here, Wilderness Torres Community Programs Manager, and I'm really excited to welcome you all to the virtual village. In response to these uncertain times and the unfortunate cancellation of our annual Passover in the Desert Festival, we decided to use all of our energy to create this virtual village. As a part of awakening the earth-based Jewish tradition, Wilderness Torah creates village life during our immersive land-based festival such as Passover in the desert by uplifting and encouraging individual gifts of the collective community. Four times a week in this virtual village space, you will learn with Wilderness Torah community members who share their gifts, as well as longtime stakeholders and the earth-based Jewish movement such as priestesses and rabbis, and um, we're just so excited to have you here. Um, would love to see raise of hands, anyone who this is their first Wilderness Torah program. Woo, wonderful. We're so excited to have you here. And also raise of hands who this is their first virtual village program. Great, yay. <laughs> We are committed to keeping the virtual village accessible and free. If you would like to support Wilderness Torah in this effort, we welcome any and all donations, large and small, um, as we endeavor to provide Jewish wisdom and community building through this hard time. If you are new to Wilderness Torah and want to learn more about what we do and how to get involved, my peer Malka is going to share the link to our website and donation page in the chat now. This session is being recorded and live streamed to Facebook. And we have all of our, our um, previous sessions on our website. So if you're curious to see what other programming we've had, feel free to check those out. We've had some really amazing sessions. And without further ado, I'm super excited to welcome in um, Yuval Ron, who is a world renowned musician, composer, educator, peace activist, and record producer. To listen to music of Yuval Ron and find more information about his recordings, books, talks, master classes, and workshops and concerts, we will share his website at the end. And we're just so excited to learn with you today. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your introduction. <clears throat> thank you for introduction, Ilana. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you. I mean, I feel that. Uh, you are a holy community. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me now. Uh, I still see Malka as the host, as the speaker. Um, let's see if, if you could... We can see you just great and hear you just great. Okay, great, great. Um, let me switch to gallery view so I can see you all. Yes. Uh, I love to see you all because I feel that we are... A holy community. This is a holy community based on my experience in the desert and with Zelig and with all of you. Um, it's a special, special, special group of people. And so I'm very, very delighted that we are keeping the spirit alive with the technology. Even though we're not together in person, we are connecting and our spirit will connect through this session. Um, I would like to start with just chanting a nigun. This is an old, old melody from Babylonia, from the Jews of Babylon. And they use this melody to chant different parts from the Bible. Some of the Syrian Jews use it. Different Jews of the Eastern world, of the Middle East, use that. And it goes like that. And 
please feel free to sing along. Please do sing along because, first of all, you are all muted, so nobody hears you. Nobody is watching you. You can feel free to express yourself and sing with la, 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 or ya, 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 or ba, 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 or di, di, di. It doesn't matter. It's a nigun. So it doesn't matter what the sound that you use as long as you sing. is one of the most ancient melodies in Jewish tradition. It goes back to Babylonian time and it could have been one of the melodies that were used in the second temple or even the first temple because the Levites have brought some of their prayers to Babylonia in the first exile. When the first temple was destroyed, the Levites went to exile to Babylonia. And this melody comes from the Babylonian tradition or all history. Imagine the Levites walking in the temple chanting this, parading, going into service with this melody. Now I'm going to share the screen with you and show you the lyrics which is also in the chat. I sent you a PDF which you can find in the chat but also I'm going to share the screen with you right now. And you see those four words, Esh, Maim, Ruach, Adama, the four elements. We will use these words with that old ancient melody in order to embody the four elements, unify them through our body. This is a practice of embodying Jewish spirituality. This is a Kabbalistic embodying practice. It's very, very, very rare. Very few people have done it over the course of history, keeping this practice alive. It's a very esoteric practice. And so we are taking, with this practice, we are taking the energy of the elements and invoking it in our own body. And we will chant it, and I'll show you some of the movement in order to embody it. But first, let's just work on pronouncing those words. So the first word is esh. Just repeat after me. Esh. You can hear the quality, the energy of fire in that sound, this Hebrew ancient word. Esh. Now the second word for water, listen to the sound. Maim. Maim. It's so curvy. It's so round. Maim. It's gentle, 
it's soft but it's also powerful just like water water can be powerful and water can be soft at the same time it has those two qualities in it and then ruach listen to the sound of this ancient hebrew word ruach ruach you can hear the wind blowing through the leaves you can hear the wind blowing through the bamboos in the desert oasis ruach and then the last word, Adama. Adama. So much weight, so much earthiness to this word. Adama. The word for earth. Adama. And out of that word, Adama, comes the word Adam, which means human. The first human being that was created, Adam. Adam came from Adama. We came out of this earth. We are connected to this earth. Whether we want it, whether we realize it. In the Hebrew, you really see the connection. It's not in Eng like in English, you have the word earth and you have the human being. It's two different words. In Hebrew, it's one word, Adama, Mother Earth, Ima Adama, Adama, and human being, Adam very powerful so I trust that you have it and I'll remind you I'm gonna go back to gallery view to uh, to see all of you and we will chant that with the nigun that we did earlier so we start with Esh, esh ma interesting that Esh rises up and then Maim, Maim, water is, are curving always down the mountain. Ooh, ah. Air is the quality of freedom that goes all around. And then Adama, Adama goes downward. So fire, the quality of fire always rising up like a flame of a candle. Water always strives to go down. You can hear it in the music. Air goes in all direction. You can hear it in the music. And Adama is down below us and it has the heaviness that we need if we want to be grounded. So let's sing it now again and pay attention to the direction and the quality of the musical notes that you are singing with those four elements. Adama, 
I, I advise that you hold your palms down towards the earth, so you feel the quality of the earth. And when you sing Ruach, make your palms face up and move around like the movement of air and feel the quality of air with your palms, your nerve ending pointing up, and you feel the lightness. And when you go down to the Adama, when you do Maim, feel the curve of a river. And when you go Esh, think about a flame of a candle, a spark, Esh. So use your hands and move as you sing this. This is a practice of unifying the elements in our body, with our voice, with our body, with our soul. Here we go, starting with Esh. Esh starting to feel it we're starting to feel it I will take questions in a little bit but I'm not checking the chat because I'm busy playing the music I'm not seeing if anybody asking questions but I will take questions but I wanted to give you a little bit of insight about these four elements and why those four elements are really important for us right now ash ash is necessary for vision if you don't have any vision, that's considered a lack of fire. Fire energy feeds on vision. And in this time, it's very important for each of us to embrace a small vision and a large vision. In time of uncertainty, you have to have a target, a short-term target and a long-term target in order to survive in this time of uncertainty uncertainty if you think all the time about the uncertainty you're getting lost you're going down but if your mind is thinking about the short-term goal and the long-term goal then you're going to be doing well mentally you're going to be working on your short-term goal and on your long-term goal during this time while we are kind of in a pause waiting for our life to come back to normal or the new normal, as it will be. So, I'll give you an example. If you don't have the fire energy, you cannot produce this vision of what will be your short-term goal and your long-term goal. Example, short-term goal can be to, uh, I don't know, to build your abdominal muscles, or to do, to do yoga every day for 20 minutes, or a short-term goal, something really small, to learn one song, to learn a new song, by the end of this week, to learn a new poem, to read a book. That's short-term goal. Long-term goal is to learn a new language. You always wanted to learn Chinese or Arabic or Hebrew. Now it's the time to do it. Take, take on a big mission for yourself, like learning a, a new language, learning a new skill. That's a short, that's a long-term goal. Now to envision it, you need fire. 
And that's why we need to invoke the fire energy. And if you notice, the fire energy comes from the third eye. The third eye up, up. It's an fire always strive upward. F esh. So feel that spark in your third eye as we sing Esh. Evoke, evoke a light, a spark of light, Nitzotz. In Hebrew, in Hebrew it's called Nitzotz. Nitzotz. Listen to that sound. Nitzotz. Spark. Esh. It has particular energy that you need to invoke. It's a powerful S. Esh. Esh. And then the next element is Maim. In Maim, we do this motion and we do it around the heart chakra, around the heart. Why? Because water is both coming, relaxing the heart, coming down. Water is a cooling element. If you're nervous, if you're anxious, take a shower. It's amazing. It's such a magical element. Just immerse yourself in water. For 10 minutes, you go out of the shower, you, you feel new, you feel refreshed, you feel different. What did, it, what did you do? Did you do meditation? Did you, did you pray? Did you chant your, as, the, the book of the Psalms? No! All you did is took a shower. You immerse yourself in water. The great mystics in the Hebrew tradition would use that. They would go to a mikvah in order to change a situation in order to relax, in, co in order to cleanse. So water has a great quality for cleansing and water is also the generosity and compassion, the flow of water. So that's why it's around the heart chakra. We are awakening the heart with a cooling motion of water and awakening generosity Chesed, the quality of chesed, loving kindness, this is all connected to water. Then the third element, ruach, it comes from the belly. It has to do with breath. Ruach is spirit, air, is exhalation, inspiration, to inspire, to breathe. And that has to do with the lungs. But we work from the belly because, as you know, when the doctor tells you, take a deep breath, or the yoga teacher tells you, take a deep breath from your belly. You need to make the belly like a balloon. Why does that facilitate deep breathing? Because when you make the belly like a balloon, the diaphragm below the lungs drop down and allows for the lungs to expand. So the belly is serving the lungs to make the lungs become stronger and have more oxygen and have really deep breathing. And this is exactly what we need right now when we have a virus that is a respiratory disease that is going around and the lungs are the most important organ in this context. We need to practice and exercise our lungs to be strong, to withstand any kind of irritation and danger and viruses and bacteria that could develop in our lungs. So our lungs needs to work out. That's what we do when we do deep breathing. So Ruach, when you sing Ruach, move down from your heart chakra, which where we were with water, and move down to your belly and circle around your belly and encourage your belly to open up and breathe deep. Then the last element is Adama. Adama is earth. And invoking the energy and the heaviness and the groundedness and seriousness and humbleness of the earth element, that is the last thing that we do need at this time, is to be grounded. Because many of us feel that we lost our ground. We lost our way of living, we lost our way of working, we lost our income, we lost our schedule, we lost our routine, we lost so many things temporarily, so we feel ungrounded. And we have to remind ourselves that we have earth under our feet. And that is where we came out of. We are Adam. We are a human being that came out of Adama. So these are the four qualities that we need to meditate on 
when we do this practice of embodying the four elements and unifying the four elements through our body and voice, we need to turn it into a meditation that we think about those four qualities that I mentioned. Esh, spark of vision. Maim, generosity and cooling. Chesed, loving kindness. Ruach, breath, the breath of life. And Adama, Mother Earth, out of which we came out of. So you say this to yourself as you chant the Hebrew. And this is maybe a little bit complicated to do right now. But after you chant the Hebrew for three hours or four hours, you can forget about the Hebrew. It's just going to go onto an automatic pilot. You will chant those four words without thinking about it. And you will do the movements without thinking about it. And then you can start meditating on the qualities, on the deeper meaning of those four elements while you chant the Hebrew. And you could do it effortlessly. But that takes some time and practice. So let's just try it. Let's give it a try. And then we'll talk, we'll have questions, and we'll have a dialogue conversation. So remember the movements, remember, remember the areas in the body. As I play the oud, I can, I can do minimal movements, but you guys can do more. You can stand, you can do it sitting, you can do it standing. And standing, you go from the esh, maim, ruach, the belly, and then Adama, you can go all the way and touch the feet and to touch the ground. And that can be like a sun salutation almost. Kind of a tree of life sun salutation that starts from going upward towards the heaven from the third eye, the heart chakra, the solar chakra, the belly, and the root chakra all the way to the earth. Or you could do it sitting. Okay, here we go. Okay, beautiful, beautiful work, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful work. 
I wanted to mention uh, because you cannot see. I'll point. I'll point my uh, my screen a little down. So after after it's an option for the water. So you you, you start with the ash, yeah, and then you could start like this, and then go down like a triangle. This is the bottom of the triangle, and this is the heart chakra, and this is the curving of the water around the heart chakra. And then when you go to the belly. One movement that I like to do here is for Ruach is from the belly to open to open up, to open up and to go in all direction like air. Imagine Ruach, like a wind blowing. So Adama. So Adama, I'm going with my feet to the ground. If I do it standing, or if I sit, I go towards the earth. So those are the four movement. Um, let me let me open it up to to you, uh, and I'd like to hear any feedback, any questions, any clarifying questions that you may have, and just press. One at a time, press the space bar and speak. Pressing the space bar and holding it down will uh, unmute you temporarily. And then when you lift your hand from the bar, uh, you will be muted again. So who would like to go first? Who would like to, qu to ask a question or clarify? Lynn? Um, Lynn would like to speak, maybe? I see Lynn in the chat. Uh, Rachel? Hi, thank you. Nice to see you again. Hi, Rachel. Um, I wanted to just get a clarification about Mayim. Mayim is water yes. in Hebrew? Yes. So, the and so we have the spark and then we come into the water. Yes. And the water is around the heart. And there's a, uh, mm -hmm. many references in Hebrew, Mayim Chaim. Maim Chaim, meaning life, water. Water gives life. Water is the source of life. If you don't have water in, a, in, a, in an oasis in the desert, the, the oasis dies. Everything dies if the water stops coming to that oasis. So our ancient ancestors in the desert knew that water is life. So they say in Hebrew, Maim Chaim. It's a source of life. It's also an image for the teaching. The Hebrew, the Torah is Maim Chaim. The oh. is a source of life. So Maim oh. is around the heart chakra, and Maim has a, the quality of generosity and loving kindness, Chesed in Hebrew. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let me let me hear from anybody else. Uh, uh, Aaron, please. Aaron, uh, I don't hear you. Now I hear you. I, oh, this is amazing stuff. I was just saying that I studied Taoism and Chinese medicine, and I think it's interesting to kind of compare and contrast what water means within um, kind of the Tao Te Ching, which is water is heavy. Water signifies inner strength and confidence, and it just grounds you. It's interesting to think about how water is tethered to the earth and how those two are interrelated as well. Yes, yes, very interesting. I've done a lot of work with Chinese medicine and I've composed uh, many, many albums uh, that commissioned by Chinese doctors, Chinese medicine doctors, and uh, a whole series of all these six healing sounds for Qigong and the, uh, the elements of water and earth and wind and metal. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the concepts and it's very interesting to contrast and compare the ancient Hebrew mystics and the ancient Chinese doctors, and there are striking similarities and some differences. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting conversation. We, I, I'm actually I'm teaching a webinar next week on Tuesday, about uh, at eleven o'clock for half an hour, uh, on Tuesday, May fifth, at eleven a.m. and it's about sound breathing meditations, and it has to do, and it's all come from Chinese medicine and six healing sounds of Qigong. So if you're interested in, in this, um, that could be an opportunity. Let me, let me hear from anybody else. Uh, anybody else has a 
question or comment okay good so uh, let me move uh, to um, another little gift that I brought for you and this is uh, in the lyrics I'm going to share the screen for a second and I'll show you the lyrics of the second song in the PDF and that's right now on the screen this comes from the Psalm 118 so I mentioned earlier chanting the Psalms in Jewish tradition has a special significance uh, Yuval, can you try sharing your screen once more? We can't see it yet. Oh, okay. Let me, thank you for telling me. Uh, let me go to share screen. I go to share screen and... Okay, I don't see it in the share screen. Let me go back to the PDF. Okay, I see the PDF. Uh, let me go back to Zoom. Uh, I lost the Zoom while I went to the PDF. Let me show chat. No. Okay. I'm going to try again to share screen. Share screen. Okay. Tell me if you see it now. You see... Uh, there's a page that says Lo Yira, Jewish Andalusi Moroccan. Could you see that? Now we can see it. Thanks. So this is, this text comes from Psalms. This is particularly text from Psalms 118. And in Jewish tradition, reading the Psalms and chanting the Psalms has a special healing quality. Uh, there are many, 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 many uh, traditions within Jewish tradition of using the Psalms for healing and for as a shield. And uh, the Psalms are considered to be a tradition that comes from King David, who wrote these, some of those Psalms he wrote while he was in very difficult situation, life-threatening situations. He was chased into a narrow valley near the Dead Sea by the soldiers of King Saul. And, and King David was not a king back then. King David was a music therapist in the court of King Saul. He was a musician. He was a shepherd who was a great musician, but he worked as a shepherd. And the King Saul was depressed and suffered from mental illness, from depression. And his advisors brought this musician, this little kid, David, to come and play for King Saul in order to f to heal him. And the music was the only thing that helped King Saul to get over his depression and mental illness. So at that point of the story, David is working as a music therapist in the court. And then he is the only brave man to go and fight Goliath and he actually wins. And then everybody wants him to be the new king. The mad, the mad Saul, the sick, mentally sick king, Saul, at that point, wants to kill his music therapist because his music therapist, this kid, this teenager kid, David, is a threat to the first king of the Israelites. The first ever king of the Israelites was mentally sick. And he could be helped only by music. And then... He goes to try to kill his music therapist. Isn't that an incredible story? I mean, nobody is teaching it. But it's right there in the Bible. It's right there. But nobody is teaching it with this point of view. They just tell you, oh, da little David went and kill killed big Goliath. And that's, that's the very important part of the story that everybody is learning. Little David against the big Goliath. Nobody is paying attention to the whole music and healing and the politics involved here. So, little, little David is running away, is hiding in a canyon near, near the, in the desert, near the Dead Sea. And then there's, there are, in, in those deserts, in the summer, and uh, usually in the spring, 
and definitely in the winter, there could be terrible, terrible floods, sudden, sudden floods. There's a sudden rain and all the canyons are flooding. Uh, in recent times, I think uh, three years ago, there was uh, a terrible, terrible catastrophe in Israel. There was uh, Boy Scouts who went on a trip during those floods and, and they, they perished because of those floods and their, their, their uh, shepherds were, were put on trial, I believe, uh, because they didn't listen to the forecast that there will be floods. So David was in, hiding in that canyon while the water are coming and the water, there was a flood and the water are coming up outside on both sides of the canyon, the soldiers of King Saul trying to catch him and kill him and the water rising and King David is in a dire straits and then he's making, a, he's making a call, a prayer for help, for redemption. And he's dealing with fear. He's dealing with deadly fear. And this is the source of some of the greatest poetry in human history, which many of the Psalms are. And in so many churches, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of churches and synagogues, every week for thousands of years, people are singing and praying and chanting these prayers, both in Christian tradition and in Jewish tradition, to get strength, to get strength and courage from this poetry that came out of this situation. And this right here, Psalms 118 is one of those. And it says, Anna Adonai Hoshiana, please, my Lord, save me. Second line, Anen, Aneni Bemerchav Yah, answer me in the zone of Yah, Yahweh. Yah is short for Yahweh, Yud Hey Vav Hey, the Hebrew name for the source of the universe. So he says, answer me in, in the zone of the Spirit. Adonai li lo ira. I have, I have my creator, and so I will not be afraid. Lo ira, the name of this song, lo means no, ira means will be afraid. So what he says here is, I have the sense, I have the connection to the creator of all life, and therefore I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. And that is the realization that he is realizing that the source of life is in him, with him. And, and the minute he realized that, there's no fear. So let's, let's try to sing, to learn to sing this song that comes from the Andalusi, Spanish, Moroccan, Jewish tradition. flavor is very very uh, in this beautiful melody uh, let's try it again from the top it's not an easy it's not an easy melody like the first song that I taught you this is more complex so it's going to take a few more listens and it's very asymmetrical so here we go the first line <laughs> Lord, 
up. We're just starting to get it. Anna Adonai Yoshi Anna Aneni Belchavia And Adonai Lino Yira One, two, three. Lo Yira track you can get it i don't know for 90 cents or something on online everywhere and you can sing it along and you can keep learning it by listening to the, the recorded track um, this is the resources page which you have in the chat and i can email it to you if you send me an email at the end of this pdf there's my email it's simple it's just yuval at yuvalronmusic.com and if you send me an email, uh, I'll send you this PDF, or maybe Wilderness Torah, Ilana, and Malka can send you that through email if you give them your email, or if you email me. And here on top of that resources PDF, there's a link uh, to get that one song from the album called Tree of Life. It's in that album, Tree of Life. It's called Loira. And there's other resources here, you know, all kinds of fun stuff, music and uh, one friend was interested in the Chinese medicine. Here there's a link to meditation and healing music tracks with the six healing s sounds of Qigong and Chinese medicine elements, metamindfulnessmusic.com. But let me go back to uh, the gallery view. And uh, I wanted to hear if you have any questions, just raise your hand and then use the space bar. If you have any questions about the song, the Psalms, which we just sang, um, does anybody, anybody would like to unmute and sing for me the song as much as you got, whatever you got out of it, so I can give you feedback and I can help you uh, get deeper into it? No? Okay. I know it's very quick, and it's not in person. You need more time. You need more time to practice. <laughs> um, no problem. Uh, but plug in that track and just sing along with the track. And you're going to get it. You've got the lyrics. You've got the recording. And you'll get it. And there's a second, um, second page. Let me go to the share screen for a second. And... I'll talk about the second, the B, the B part. You see here, it starts with Uveshem Adonai Ekera, and it says so. What it means, Uveshem, it's in the name Adonai. You know, the word Adonai is not in the text. Just so that you know, this is a substitute. It's not correct lyrics. It's not the correct sound. It's not part of the psalm, really. The word Adonai in all this song and in all Jewish prayers and in all Jewish books and in all in every page of the Bible the word Adonai or sometimes people use the word Hashem it's a substitute for the ancient Hebrew sound for the creator of the universe which was Yud Hey Vav Hey and nobody knows how it was pronounced but according to linguists it could have been either Yahweh or Yahweh. That's the closest expert linguist got to what they think is the bottom of this mystery. This is, this is one of the greatest mysteries in human history. You have 
a nation, a small Hebrew nation, a very spiritual nation that is led by priests, not by kings, not by governors, not by generals. It's led, led by prophets and spiritual people. And they have their second king, King David, is a professional musician, professional musical therapist, who is establishing a music tradition of the Psalms and the music tradition in the temple. And this nation, which is it's so spiritual and so musical, is doomed to have a name for their concept of the creator of life that they cannot sound. None of us is allowed to sound, to hear, to feel the sound vibration of what our ancestors conceived of as the creator of all life. And for 2,000 years, all of our ancestors have been replacing that sound, that really important sound, with a substitute that is Adonai, which means my Lord, which is not the right word, it's not the right meaning, and it's not the right sound vibration. And from Chinese medicine and from Qigong and from neuroscience, we know that every frequency, every sound has a different impact on our mind and on our bodies. So sound is important. Sound is medicine. Sound frequency can affect us mentally and physically differently. And so this is the greatest mystery. One of the greatest mysteries in, in human history is what was the sound of the Hebrew God, the yud Hey vav Hey. How did they say it? How, how did the high priest in Jerusalem, only one day a year on Yom Kippur, how did he chant it? Nobody knows. But we assume that it, it was Yahweh or Yahweh. So this is the sound right here in the Psalms. Uvashem Adonai Ekera. Whenever you see the Adonai, imagine a different sound there. The sound of breath. Yahweh. Yahweh. It's a strange name that has no consonants. It has only vowels. And when you say a name that has only vowels, what do you get? You get breath. Yahweh. The second line, Ana Adonai Malta Nafshi, please, the source of life, Yahweh, save my soul. Adonai Libe Ozri, again, Yahweh is with me and is the source of my courage. Beozri is with me, giving me courage. The word, the root word of Beozri is Oz. Oz means courage and strength. So re connecting to the original vibration, connecting to the source of life, connecting to this greatest mystery, is an incredible source of courage and no fear. And that is what King David, before he was king, wrote in the Psalms. So I'd like to just finish up in the last two minutes and I'll be happy to take any questions. Just I'll share I'll share the screen and go down the screen. Um, if you want to get more music to help you during the day and the night, I put together playlists. There was a free playlist on YouTube and Spotify, all kinds of music that I chose, including my own music, to relieve some of the issues and the challenges that we have. For example, cabin fever playlists or soothe social distances playlists. And I put a lot of thought in what kind of music I think, based on my experience and my work with therapists and with doctors and with neuroscientists, which kind of music would do what. So there's another one called Soothe Human Isolation Playlist. Um, there's a link to meditation, healing music, and there's my email and my website in the bottom. If you want to 
be in touch send me any question you wish and uh, let me stop sharing the screen and go back to the gallery and and before we go um, thank you for your attention thank you for, thank you for uh, wilderness Torah for putting us together this is a wonderful gift that wilderness Torah is giving us to be together and to study together this is a fascinating fascinating amazing mind-blowing study that I'm very grateful that I can share with you and I'm grateful for Reb Zelig for inviting me to share with you and um, I love Reb Zelig's teaching and I feel so much at home with you Zelig and with the community and uh, I hope that you feel it too I hope that you keep in touch and we expand and get deeper with this kind of work uh, regardless pandemic or not or post pandemic we just go deep into these fascinating practices and work um, any question before we go any anybody has a question or a comment okay I don't see any questions I'm not looking at the chat where would the link be for the Tuesday um, webinar Oh, ah, it's on my website calendar. Oh, okay, thank you. Events calendar at yuvalranmusic.com. That reminds me of a Hasidic story. Since you've sung, we ha no longer have questions. That's how the story goes. <laughs> you've answered all our questions <laughs> with the music itself. Thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you, Lynn. So good to see you and to be with you. Uh, I'm going to do a short little closing for us, and then I'll pass it back to you for some closing words and music, okay. if that sounds good, so we can, uh, sure. can end in a good way together. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Malka with Wilderness Torah Community Programs and Logistics Manager, and just want to say a thank you before we end today. Um, again, all of our sessions are being recorded. You can find them on Wilderness Torah's Facebook page. Um, and as well, they'll be on our website about a week after each session. Um, we have more incredible sessions this week. Tomorrow will be um, the four winds connecting spirit and earth and the four corners of the world with Rabbi Zelig of Wilderness Torah. And Friday, we're going to have Organic Torah, the Torah of Nature and Nature of Torah with Rabbi Natan. And if you check out our newsletter or go to our web link, which Alana will put in the chat for Virtual Village, you can see all the things we also have coming up next week. Four more sessions, all incredible. Um, and stay tuned for our newsletter. It comes out every week, um, posting more details about all of our programming. Um, Alana will also put a link to our donation page if you feel called to support our work further. And last but not least, of course, just a huge thank you to Yuval. Incredibly incredibly healing and needed uh, for these times to hear your wisdom and um, melodies and lyrics and um, incredible spirit. So thank you so much for, for bringing your music and um, in a real honor to hear from you. And I'll pass it right back to you for the last closing words as we wrap up in the next minute. Thank you. Let's just sing the Nigun with the Esh Mime, this ancient Babylonian Jewish Nigun with the Esh Mime Ruach. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Be well. Practice. 
practice what we learn, enrich yourself with these sounds, with these words, and keep in touch. Thank you, Yuval. You're welcome. Be well. Is there a way to keep the chat uh, yeah, I can like suggestions? Or is, do you have a way to export it? Or uh, so it, it exists when the chat is over? You click the three uh, bars to the right. I believe you can save the chat. Um, save chat, I see. Okay. Yeah. I can't save that over here, unfortunately. Usually you can. Yeah, I see that. It might just be a host capability, but we will, um, anything that you need, you can find on our website or Yuval's website and his email as well if you have more questions. Um, we are going to sign off of this here page, so um, the Zoom room. So thank you so much. Reach out to us and reach out to Yuval if you need anything else. And thanks for joining. Like Bye, everyone. Bye.